Okay, so I'm Ina and I'm from University of Cincinnati and I'm working with grad student Prakash Yuprini and under the mentor Nick Pedraza. So the title of my project is Optical Emission Spectroscopy During the Thin Film Sputtered Deposition of Aluminum Dope Zinc Oxide. So why aluminum dope zinc oxide? Well that is the transparent conducting oxide layer of a SIG cell, which is copper, indium, gallium selenide. And it's only like one of like um, amongst like a few different solar cells. And it's thin film because there are different layers to the actual solar cell. So TCO, which is the transparent conducting oxide, that's at the top. And it's transparent in the visible range, but the, it'll reflect infrared light. So it'll prevent the cell from heating up and it also it's, it's conducting, so we need that for a solar cell. So to build the layer, so we're only focusing on that top layer for now, and then uh, Prakash will continue that for the entire solar cell, and I'm just helping him with the first layer. So the sputtering deposition process. So basically we have ionized argon and you shoot it at the sputtering target, which is a block of just the aluminum dope zinc oxide. So that will like put the atoms into the chamber and it'll create like an ionized gas or the plasma. And then it'll we have a substrate which is just a um, piece of glass and it was sodium and glass. And then it'll build up on that layer of glass, kind of like how dust settles on a table. And then that takes like an hour and a half, and you get a, a layer that's about like a fraction of the thickness of your hair. So that picture is inside of our chamber through the window. And you can see this is our um, sputtering target. And you can see that glowing. So it emits a purple light. So what I'm doing is, OK, well, I'll do that. So this is the piece of glass before and after. So before, you can see it's really clear, like you can barely see it's even higher. And then afterwards, you can actually see the layer. It's a little discolored. I thought that was pretty cool. So what I'm doing is basically with OES, it takes, there's a, so we have the OES actually right here. And this is a fiberglass tube. And at the end, there's an eye. So it'll take that purple light and then the fiberglass will take it into the box and then it'll um, spit out a little chart such as this. And it'll take, it'll have like wavelength versus intensity. Sorry, I'm flipping that. But so I have the, this is a picture like on my computer screen. So from this, we can determine characteristics and properties of the plasma. So by uh, analyzing the plasma, we can figure out other characteristics and, pro characteristics and properties of the layer itself. And then from there, we can determine like how efficient the cell will be and uh, most other things. So other applications of OES, you can determine electron temperature and then other chemical elements, but we're not focusing on that right now. So these are results that I've got from the first deposition. So this is just the emission spectrum of that purple light, and it's, uh, the OES is taking the measurement every 10 seconds for the entire hour and a half, so I, there's a lot of data. But this is it built over time. And these are one of the peaks. This is one of the peaks. And then, so what Nick wanted was to see how the peaks are training over time. So I took the main wavelengths, and then I plot it over time. And then you can see there's not a lot of change, but this is only one deposition, and we're going to be doing a few over summer. So then what I will continue to do from there, I'm going to fit each of the peaks to a Gaussian fit, or just a normal curve. And then from there, I can see uh, the amplitude, the mean, or like the position of it, and then the width of the peak. And then there's error with each uh, parameter. So you can see at about 220 seconds in, the amplitude shoots up. So you can see that it gets bigger and plasma starts glowing a lot. And from there, I'll just plot each of the parameters over time and then see how it changes. Okay. 
and I think I'll leave it. All right. these individual spectral lines uh, in the spectrum that you showed us? Yeah, yes, I could. There, yeah, I already know a few of these. It's just, I haven't focused on them yet. By now, like, this pattern, this is the argon, and then there's zinc, like, over here. But that's not the focus of my project right now. But Nick will want me to do that later. But I'm just, but he wants me to focus more on uh, the distribution of the peaks and, like, because he hasn't been able to do that the past few years. So... But you may want to know, yeah, which, know which peak to look at because some of them may be irrelevant to your experiment. Yeah. Others have more physical information. Yeah, there may be other impurities in the chamber since other elements have been in there before. Yeah, Kendra? This might not be completely relevant, but I'm just curious about it. Do you know how they make like the solid block? Of the owner and the no idea. <laughs> they prepare it somehow, but I yeah, I'm curious about that. I have no idea. All right. Well, let's thank Anna and Bill.